Hey guys, we've celebrated Easter Sunday, Jesus Christ's resurrection. He's alive. And remember, we've talked about it over and over and over again about where Jesus is right now. He's sitting at God's right hand. Raise your right hand. And you know that he's sitting right there and he's listening to our prayers every day. He hears what you see, what you say. He knows what you're going through because he lived here and walked here among us and he suffered for you. He gave himself up, his whole body up for you. He went to, to die for you, for your sins. So that one day when our earthly bodies go away, we will be able to live eternally with God forever and ever in the new heaven and earth when it comes together again. What a wonderful promise it is and what a wonderful thing that God has done for all of us. We, we, we can't ever even begin to thank him enough. So I want you to remember that as we go through these next few months and any time that you're facing anything that is difficult to remember what Jesus did for you, the sacrifice that he made for you and the resurrection, how God reached down in his infinite power and pulled Jesus back to life again so that we could have eternity with God. When God looks at us now, he doesn't see us with all of our sinfulness. He sees us as the one who believes in Jesus and is covered by Jesus. What a wonderful, wonderful gift that is. Please remember that. So today we're going to move on and talk a little bit about what Jesus did after his resurrection because he stayed around for a bit. Um, and there are people out there who argue that the resurrection didn't happen. They say that it's a legend. They say that um, the women went to the wrong tomb. They say all sorts of things. But there are incredible proofs of Jesus' resurrection. And I want to talk to you just a few minutes about them. The first thing that they talked about was um, that it was in, that they went to the wrong tomb. And the women who went to that tomb were there when they put Jesus' body in. So they went to the right place. They're the ones that wrapped him in cloth. They're the ones that knew exactly where he was. They weren't going to forget that. It would be just like uh, me forgetting where um, I, my, my mother was buried. That, that doesn't happen. You will remember it because it's a very important time in your life. So these women went back to the right tomb. And even the, the soldiers, it's reported in the Bible that the soldiers went back to the Sanhedrin and told them that Jesus, had moved, that Jesus was gone. So there are uh, ample infallible proofs that indeed Jesus was gone. Also, Jesus then went and appeared. First of all, he appeared to Mary um, in the garden. Um, and she clung to him. She, the Bible says that she held on to him, and Jesus told her that she couldn't do that, that he needed to go to Galilee and see the disciples, and she needed to go before him and tell them. So that was a, a, a first person that he appeared to. And then he was walking on the road to Emmaus, I assume on his way to Galilee to see the disciples. And he was walking with, came up upon two of his, his disciples, his followers, and he talks with them as he walks with them. And they didn't recognize Jesus to begin with. And we think the reason behind that is because his resurrection, he had his resurrection body, which I'm not sure how it's different uh, than our bodies would be today, but it was different. And so possibly they didn't recognize Jesus. And But they were talking about him and they were talking about the crucifixion and they were talking about his death. And Jesus joined them from supper that night, and that's when he broke the bread with them. And as soon as he did that, their eyes were opened, and they realized who Jesus was. So that's a, another reporting of Jesus walking and alive. Then Jesus went in to, to visit with the um, disciples, um, and all of them were there, with the exception, of course, Judas, who had hung himself and um, because he had betrayed Jesus. And um, Timothy, Timothy was, um, no, Tom, I'm sorry, Thomas. Thomas was not there. And so Jesus appeared to them. He spoke with them. He sat with them. You know, it was obvious that he was alive. Now, when Thomas returned back to the group, he said that he wouldn't believe that Jesus was alive until he actually touched where the nail holes were, 
where, where they had um, crucified him. So Jesus came back again to the um, disciples and he told Timothy, I mean, Thomas, get that straight, he told Thomas, touch my hands. And Thomas just fell down on his knees and said, no, Lord, I know that it is you. So there was another example, another proof that is written in the Bible, another reporting of, um, of Jesus' being around. Um, he also appeared to many of the other disciples on several other um, opportunities. He appeared to over 500 people at one sitting on a hill in Galilee. Jesus over and over and over again wanted to make sure that number one, that the people knew that, that he was alive, that he had been resurrected by God, that the things that he had promised, if you'll remember, he told the, the um, Sanhedrin that you, the temple will be torn down. You will tear down this temple in three days, but it will be resurrected in those three days, that it will come back to life. And he was talking about himself. So Jesus made sure by virtue of his appearances to the people, that they knew that he was still alive. Now, was it, you know, people's imaginations? Well, if it was, then their imaginations changed their lives because these people, after Jesus' crucifixion, were hiding. They were hiding in an upper room. They were afraid of what might happen to them next because they were afraid that they were next. After Jesus appeared to them, after he spoke to them, after he explained to them what was happening, they became the boldest, the, the, mo the most daring speaking people in favor of the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are the ones that started the church on which the church was founded. It wasn't founded on imaginations. It was founded on truth, the truth that Jesus was was risen. And then also we have to think about not only did they find, found the church find the church on it, build the church on it. They also gave their lives up. All of the disciples with the exception of John were were crucified or were killed in some way. They all they all gave themselves for Jesus. Um I don't know about you, but I don't believe I would give myself up and fight the battle like that for my imagination. Jesus changed their lives. And then there's a matter of Paul, as we will talk about later. Paul, who persecuted the church, who killed the Christians, who did it with a great deal of satisfaction, met the risen Jesus and changed him completely and totally and became one of the greatest evangelists ever for the church. So, there were proofs, infallible proofs, that Jesus indeed was risen. What difference does it make in our faith, whether he, he rose again or not? Well, it matters because we see in that the incomparable power of God. And we see, too, that Jesus indeed was God's Son. So that confirms what our beliefs are all based on, our faith in God, and our faith in Jesus. So, today's video is about the um, the some of the evidences of Jesus's um, resurrection. The story that we're going to see today is one that um, I, I'll just remind you the backstory of. But uh, remember that Peter was a great follower of Jesus, one of his favorite disciples. But Jesus had told Peter during that last week, that he would deny him three times, which Jesus, which Peter did while he was waiting outside while the Sanhedrin were um, trying Jesus. He did. He denied him three times. And then Jesus walked past him and saw him, and he looked at him. Remember, we talked about this with love. So this is one of the reinstatements that we'll talk about of Peter to Jesus, and then Jesus giving Peter his um, job moving forward. So let's watch this.
Have you caught any fish? No. Throw your net into the water on the right side of your boat. One hundred and fifty-three. We've never caught that many fish in one haul. A lot of fish. I'm a fisherman. Hmm. So, Simon Peter. Do you love me more than these? <coughs> Lord! Yes, of course I love you. Then take care of my lambs. Uh-oh. What? When Jesus first came here to call us, what did he say we'd learn? To be fishers of men. I forgot about that. Again, Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? May a curse fall on me if I'm not telling the truth. I don't know that man. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Then take care of my... Take care of my sheep. Three times. You think he'll ask Peter again? Simon Peter, do you love me? I don't know that man. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Take care of my sheep, Peter. Follow me. All power in heaven and on earth is given to me. Make followers all over the world and baptize them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have told you, and I will always be with you. I will continue with you until the end of the world. And then he was gone. Jesus was returning to his Father in heaven. And those men and women did change the world. Jesus sent them the Holy Spirit to help spread the good news. And that same Spirit is still with us today, helping us to live for Jesus, and helping us tell the good news that He is alive and preparing a place for us in heaven. You forget how wonderful, just how awesome the the the, the different um, words of Jesus uh, um, are. 
than they are today. They're such life-giving, life-changing things. Um, Jesus, first of all, spoke to Peter. And um, if you remember, Peter had denied him three times. Well, Jesus reinstates Peter, and this is the way he does it. He speaks to him, and he asks him first if he will feed his lambs. And we refer to the lambs or people who are young and, and have just begun to understand what the um, Word of God says. And he's asking him to feed the lambs, which is what I'm trying to do with you guys right now is feed you. And he also asks them to take care of his sheep. Um, and he asks that two times. So Jesus, the same three times that uh, Peter denied Jesus, Jesus asked him three times to if he loves him. And in, in that, he is reinstating Peter. He is letting Peter know that he loves him very much. And taking care of his sheep, um, remember Jesus talked about himself being the great shepherd and how the, his sheep knew his voice. And he's passing that on to Peter and to the other disciples that they are to take care of the believers that Jesus has. And that's what the church does today. And that's how they um, have um, taken care of all of us, especially during this time is through um, Jesus' commission to take care of the sheep. Then Jesus walked away um, with the disciples and went to the top of a hill. And from there, a cloud came down and they took Jesus um, into heaven back to be with God. And as we talked about where he is right now, at God's right hand, listening to our prayers. But he gave the people a great commission, is what it's called, before he left. And he told them to go out into all parts of the world, everywhere and to spread the gospel of Jesus, to let everyone know about his love, the wisdom of um, following Jesus, to let them know who Jesus was, how much God loves us, and then later on, it will be about the Holy Spirit too, which will come to them later. And he promised them that, that he would give them the Holy Spirit later, and that will be about the time of Pentecost when they will receive that. So Jesus forgave, he, he, first, he sacrificed, he fa and in that sacrifice, he forgave, forgave every last one of us. And then he reinstated Peter, and in that reinstatement, he began the church. And then he ascended, and when he ascended before he left, he gave them a charge, a responsibility to share the gospel throughout the world. And that's exactly what those disciples did. And we'll, we'll be learning a little bit more about that this summer, but that's exactly what they did. They went out into all parts of the known world. And back then, they didn't have cars and planes and stuff, and a lot of times they did it on foot, and they did it in areas that the people had absolutely no belief in God. They believed in idols, but they worked hard, and they continued to um, um, pray with people and to teach people over and over and over again until Christianity began its, its spread. And once it began, it spread like wildfire. Um, so that's the, the end of the beginning of the story of Jesus because the church will begin. And that's the true, true, true story of Jesus. Every time a church began, every time a new believer um, joined, that was the story of Jesus. That was what he was here for. That was his purpose. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I hope you'll think about it too. That those people that were given that charge from Jesus, they have handed that charge over to us today. And it is our responsibility now to share the gospel of Jesus. Um, as parents... It's our responsibility to make sure that our children hear it every day. It's our responsibility to make sure that our children participate in Sunday school and in church. It's our responsibility to make sure that we do too, that we are lifting God's word up, that we are lifting our praises up to him, and that we are deepening and continuing our faith every day and then sharing it with our neighbors. And because that's what Jesus told us to do. So, I hope to see you all soon. I saw a few more of you last week um, on Easter Sunday, and it was awfully good to see you. Um, and I know that you can't drive yourselves here. I, I understand that. 
but I do hope that you will um, encourage your parents to bring you, um, and we look forward to seeing you again. Y'all have a blessed week.